Well, the U.S. and Russia have had a tense few weeks over what to do in Syria. Over the weekend, fighter planes from both sides were able to get as close as 20 miles apart, able to see each other. Uh, there's a visual contact there. Yesterday, reports surfaced that the U.S. expects an agreement with Russia on the air safety standards, and those agreements should come any day now. This, according to Defense Secretary Ash Carter, hoping an accord will stop rival bombing campaigns from affecting each other or getting too close. For more on the situation in Syria, we're joined now by Washington Times columnist Todd Wood and former CIA analyst Fred Flights, currently the senior vice president at the Center for Security Policy. Gentlemen, it's good to have you with us. Fred, let's start with you. These new reports that I'm hearing uh, about Russia using Syria as a proving ground for its military, and I'm quoting the New York Times here, quote, Russian jets have struck uh, in support of Syrian ground troops, reflecting what American officials described as months of meticulous planning behind Russia's first military campaign outside former Soviet borders since the end of the Soviet Union. Are we falling behind, Fred, in a new arms race with the Soviet, or with the, I should say, the Russians, not the Soviets? I don't think we're falling behind in terms of an arms race, but in terms of the military presence and the strategic situation in Syria, I think we're falling way behind because Syria is pursuing, I mean, Russia is pursuing a very ag aggressive effort to go after enemies of the Assad regime, and, and anything we're prepared to do is extremely restricted in terms of just fighting ISIS, and we're not hitting enemies of the, of the Assad regime, we're not hitting uh, Assad forces. I think Russia's real, Russia really has the momentum in Syria. All right, so Russia being more proactive, actually trying to get the result that they want to see. We're stay, taking a step back. But, Todd, I want to ask you about these close calls between the Russian and U.S. jets. They're still miles apart, but you're a former Air Force pilot. Tell us how close is too close. Well, look, they were within visual range. I, I am not so concerned about there being some type of dogfight or air-to-air -air conflict. I mean, these are ground attack aircraft. I mean, I guess they could get close enough to have some kind of mishap, but that's not really what concerns me. What concerns me is a possible ground-to-air strike, someone, uh, there has to be man-pad, man-portable missiles among both sides here. Uh, the Russians have very capable air defense systems in place now in Syria, you know, the S-400s, S-300s, and, and they can travel a long way and they're very accurate and very lethal. So my concern is if, uh, you know, somebody hits the wrong guys on the ground, someone, you know, pops off a missile and then things just snowball. That's, that's more the scenario that worries me. So the miscalculation is real. And I read a report, Fred, earlier this week that uh, some of these rebe rebels were using American-made weapons to fire on Russian troops. Can we just call this a proxy war? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little reluctant. I guess in some ways it's a proxy war, but I'm a little reluctant to say that that's the right thing to call it because our support for rebels in Syria is so weak and Russia has such an aggressive posture. And I think our support for moderate rebels is being scaled back so much. So if it's a proxy war now, it's a minor one. And I think eventually the moderate rebels are going to be overrun. So if we were more involved, it might be more of a proxy war, in other words. Well, if we were more involved arming rebels in Syria, I think that would be one thing. But we've already canceled our program to arm moderate Syrian rebels. There is an effort to arm uh, Syrian rebels who might be associated with the Syrian Kurds. But we really don't know what that program is going to amount to, and I think it's going to be pretty minor. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about Eastern Europe. A week or so ago, more than 20,000 protesters in Moldova gathered to demand the resignation of government officials over a billion-dollar bank fraud. Of course, Moldova is right next to the U Ukraine. Putin has wanted some influence in that country for a long time, but is this his next move? Todd, what do you think? Well, you, the situation here is not good. You've got a uh, you know, government that is actually pro-EU, uh, but has the Soviet history of corruption uh, from the bottom of the top. And someone or some entity has stolen a billion and a half dollars out of the federal treasury, which is about one-fifth of their GDP. It's a very small, poor country. So the people are very angry. I mean, these, this is pensions, medical care. And so there's a talk of another demonstration where they're going to seal off parliament here soon. Um, so it, the situation could get very volatile. P Putin does not want this. I mean, this is what they're scared about. Uh, it's why they went into Ukraine. Uh, they're worried about a color revolution uh, like what happened to Yanukovych. So um, they're watching this very closely. Uh, the Russian media is discussing it uh, quite openly. So um, it's a flashpoint. That's, 
it's, it could be a problem. Well, Fred, let me follow up with you. The last question here, kind of the Eastern European situation has fallen off the front page of the papers ever since Putin's gotten aggressive in Syria. Is this still an area that needs to be watched very closely or is Putin bogged down there, as some might say? Well, there are Russian populations in many of these former Soviet republics. And given what's happened in Crimea and Ukraine, what happened in Georgia and Moldova during, uh, I think, 10 to 15 years ago, I think there's a very real possibility that Russia may be thinking of, in, of increasing its influence or maybe intervening in other former Soviet states. This has to be watched very closely. All right. Well, there's a lot that has to be watched very closely. Thank you guys for being with us. And giving us some perspective on both those situations. Fred Flights, Todd Wood, great to talk to you. Just ahead on Newsmax now, a family of a crew member who disappeared on that sunken cargo ship take action what they say should have never have happened. And the Army is on a mission and it needs your help. That is, if you're a woman, we'll explain when Newsmax now continues.